Hey everybody, welcome to episode 7.5. This is our weekly fitness episode. My name is Mike. And this is Rob. And okay, uh, right. you are watching the Mindset Conversation channel on the Mind <laughs> Mindset Conversation Network. <laughs> and we'd like to welcome <laughs> you to our uh, second official fitness episode. I don't know how many times we could say Mindset Conversation in one sentence. but well, How many times have we <laughs> talked about our business? In one in like five minutes, so anything's possible here on Mindset Conversation. Yeah. But anyway, today's episode is programming routines, uh, basically how people work out. And uh, as usual, let's start in the past when we all started getting into it. I mean, again, I started a little earlier than you, but um, I feel that you know everything really started with. Um, well, you know what? We even go even before that. Um, there wasn't a lot of people that worked out when we were younger, but back in the forties and the fifties and I mean, even the twenties and the thirties, it was kind of taboo. Like people didn't work out, you know, it was more of a, a very niche people, almost like circus people, you know, like strong men. And, and well, you, like that. you gotta, you gotta figure then a lot of people back then were in working class, right? They, they worked a lot and out there, a lot of their, a lot of their exercise came from work, right? Their mechanics, their they worked in the field. They work, you know. Uh, I mean, it's not working out, but like some of them worked in a in a warehouse and stuff like that. But you know, they got at least exercise that way. They they were always at least walking around and active. So right, right. I mean, you make an apple pie now. You go to the store, get the ingredients, and throw it in the oven. Back then, you had to pick the stuff. You had to like. <laughs> there was no store to go to. Well, I mean, yeah, there, there, there was a store, but I, I think you had to. They most people walk to there, you know. There's, I, I guess, what I'm saying is like desk job. Like there, there, it wasn't a whole lot of desk jobs. There were, but it's um, not as many as there are now, right? Like where it was it, the Industrial somewhere. Revolution, so yeah. I mean, it was like yep. buildings being built and skyscrapers being built, and that's right. where you see all those pictures of those guys having lunch, like a yep. hundred stories in the air. Yep, whatever. And that's why they they're always. When you see pictures of people back then, they're they're just typically in shape, um, and they they weren't really working on the gym, but just because they were just doing manual labor. So oh, so wait a minute. So what you're telling me is they didn't have macro diets and supplements back then. <laughs> no. How, um, how could they I, possibly have been in shape without a macro diet or you know some kind of supplement? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, I think I think I, I, I Rob just moved on that. from that. He didn't want yeah. to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, and that's when I feel that's when even back then the gimmicky things started happening, and that's where you see like the women in those things that used to shake them. Yeah, yeah, you know, and then they, that was them trying to like capitalize on the regular people, you know, and, and try to bring them over into exercising. So even all the way back then. With, there was gimmicky stuff. I mean, there's always been snake oil, so I sure, can't say, yeah. you know. Yeah, that uh, I think that's ever since, ever since currency and man uh, in 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 the ever since currency has ever been produced, right? It's there was one person always trying to get more of that. Right. There was probably Neanderthals trying to rip off each other for pelts or something. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, this is this is very nice quality. This is uh, <laughs> very uh, not many in existence. You pay extra. <laughs> or, or back then it would be oh, uh, 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 yeah, right, 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 right. Well, I was trying to translate. <laughs> okay. Yeah. On a side note, they've shown that um, uh, they did the DNA. This is on a way side note, but kind of not. They, they did uh, DNA testing on Italians' DNA. You're gonna love this. Yeah. And they've actually found that we have traits of Neanderthal blood. In oh. us, so it makes a lot of sense when you think Italians are a lot of short, hairy people. It kind of makes sense <laughs> that we would have the edge to blood. We're hard workers. We're thick little guys. So I just wanted to interject that since we were talking about that. But um, <laughs> right. that's when the um, uh, yeah, no. So they started bringing all those, and I'm talking. And they were real gimmicky back then. If you ever just look on YouTube and and see some of the videos, I've actually posted a few on my um on my other website of um, just the crazy, like they'd lay on things and it would just roll them out. Like they, they were in a premise, like you could almost find that 
well, you know, that kind of scientifically could do something, but your implementation of it isn't. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, and, and don't forget, like they could get away with a lot of that stuff back then, but just because there's they don't. It's the power information, right? Like, hashtag IA. <laughs> oh man, there you go. <laughs> um, it's power information, right? Like nowadays, like something like that wouldn't last very long. It'd be actually ridiculed, right? Like just like that shake weight or whatever, right? Eventually. Oh come on, you didn't use that, dude. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that would so, be one of the stupidest things I've ever yeah, seen in my I, life. And e and even back, e even we had the internet when that came out. It's still, I mean, it's still, you know, people still bought it, but like it, it was quickly routed out. Like, like it's more of a joke now, right? So it's human nature. People yeah. want to be, they want that answer. They want that easy fix. They everybody thinks it's out there, so they they want it. And I don't even know how that one guy. Do you see that one thing where they, you, you you put it around your neck and whenever you have a chance, you put it in your mouth and chew on it. What? It's no. Make, oh, it's called the jaw or something, dude. It's ridiculous. It's like this big rubber thing. Put it in your mouth. It's, it's supposed to give you a better jawline. It's supposed to work out and help circulation in your head and help you grow hair and stuff. So wait, wait. It's just the mouthpiece that you just it, chew on. You chew on it. You screw you like this. I know people can't see it on the podcast, yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah, arr, arr, you, just, arr, arr, yeah. And you chew on it while you're working out and while you're walking or whatever. And That's it's supposed stupid. to help bring <laughs> circulation to your head. It's supposed to help grow hair, stimulate a hair growth and, and, and like give you a jawline and help you lose weight. And then they show before and after picture. They look no different, dude. <laughs> they look absolutely no different except that, well, of course, uh, uh, before and after picture 101. You got to look really sad in the before picture. Yeah, for sure, for sure. You yeah. have to look sad, and then the after picture, you have to be happy, and you have to change the lighting and everything. Yeah. I mean, if you look close, a lot of times it's BS, really. I mean, they, there's videos out there where they show you where in 24 hours it can look different just by manipulating water, lighting, yep. Um, yep. tan, get a, a, you know, a tan on their skin, yep. uh, go do a few exercises to pump up and – you're ready to go, but I digress. Let's go back yeah. to the thing. So and don't forget, some of them are also shot in reverse. Right, right, <laughs> which is really easy to do. Yeah, after so, before, yeah. I think people do on a regular basis. Yeah, exactly. It's like, hey, I'm I'm this way now. All right, I'm. I, let's say I just worked out. Take a picture, and then I'll eat something like a whole uh, uh like a buffet or something, and then take a picture of that, and that will be the before and my. My wor after workout picture will be the after, all in right. one day. So. I love when they push their stomachs out too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you could so tell that they they, yeah. they make it look like they're not doing it. You're yeah. doing it, dude. <laughs> You're one hundred percent sticking your stomach out. Oh. But all right, so as things progressed more, then you had um, Mr. Olympia and bodybuilding starting to pick up. So um, and then strong men, strong men have always been around. Yeah. So that's where you had the rise of bodybuilding and powerlifting, like we mentioned in a previous episode. Um, that became big, but that was still like um, a fringe thing. I mean, regular – it wasn't big with people yet. Even when I was 16 and I started getting into it, um, there wasn't as many commercial gyms as there are now. Like, I, I, I mean commercial by just everybody and their mother from 20 to 80 ago is what I mean. I think that's when it started. I, I believe that's really when it started to hit it big, like the, because of the Gold's gyms and stuff like that started to pop up. Like I wouldn't say it was popular, but that's I think that's when it started. But that was still like bodybuilders, though. Like you yeah, thought Gold's, you thought bodybuilder. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And powerhouse. Yeah. And, yeah. You know the world, world yeah. gym. Yeah. That was sort of big. World powerhouse Gold's were the big ones. Those that those are the ones you were synonymous with. You think. Big bulky powerlifter guys or um, uh, body lifter, uh, body <laughs> body lifter. That's a new cross between powerlifting and, and bodybuilding. Powerlifting, uh, or, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so <asshole>. uh, <laughs> but um, That's what you get? Uh, yeah, exactly. So um. That's when I got into it, and I was working out, and it was bodybuilder workouts. It was, you know, kill yourself. Doing lots of sets, 
Um, not so much. It was never tons of weight with bodybuilding, which we know now you don't have to do to have hypertrophy. Okay. Um, you, um, but it was volume and intensity was through the roof. And well, you mean intensity? You mean just like as in terms of workout intensity, not intensity as in terms of programming intensity? No. Okay. Right. No. No. Um, so, you know, but, and you were going by like a kid like me, 16, I was lucky enough to have other bodybuilding people to talk to, but at the same time, you're getting information from people that are taking stuff and you're getting it from magazines. Cause there was no, I mean, there was muscular development was kind of on the fringe, but there was flex and all those were pure bodybuilding magazines. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. But yeah, and even then, they it's 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 almost like the Cosmo, right? Like it's, they 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 want it's it's almost like they put enough information for people to be interested in, but not enough to be uh, readily informed. Right. So enough to sell stuff too. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Just so enough. just enough. So I mean, the, even the information back then, yeah, it's either you got it like. Uh, from friend of a friend of a friend who was taking stuff, or you got from pe like these guy like people that are only give you half information. So you you'd keep wanting to you won't you wouldn't uh, have all the information. So you'd still have to buy their magazine. So right, right, and then you'd be doing their workouts. This yeah. is Mohammed Benaziz's workout. Right, right. Okay, that's great, but I'm not Mohammed Beniziza, and I'm not right. going to look like that. Exactly. And you're not, but you know what you're shape. missing, you're missing this protein shake. So yeah. if you take this, then you'll be more like him. Yeah. And it was just, it was unrealistic, but that's all you had back then. And you didn't have the internet. There was none of that. So you couldn't research stuff on a broader scale. You just had the magazines. It wasn't really covered on the news. I mean, you were able to watch like bodybuilding shows certain nights sometimes. And I, they had a, a couple shows that I would watch that would be like once or twice a month on a Saturday. But again, it was bodybuilder focused. It wasn't all around health or anything like that. Yeah. It was how to get as big as possible as quickly as possible. So, but you know, that's when we started getting something like a Jack LaLanne. And again, for people that weren't on the East coast, I don't know if you guys had stuff like that, but that was our big commercial gym where everybody and their mother started going. You wouldn't catch a bodybuilder there. Right. It was quite the opposite. Right. So, uh, um, so, so yeah, I, I know we're talking about the history of it right now, but like, I, I think we should start. I know this, this, this session was about like programming and uh, different types of routines and stuff like that. I, I think we covered a lot of the history in our previous episode. Right. Right. Well, I was going to segue into this. <laughs> so, right. um, when people started coming to the gym, they were programmed with the machines, the fancy machines in the gym. Because, again, uh, I think the dumbbells and the barbells were synonymous with bodybuilders. So to sell on people coming in, their programming was uh, more machine-based. Because you would see that at a lot of the commercial gyms would be more machines, not so much of the other stuff. And, you know, like a track, so people could walk around or run mm. a track. Um and do things like that. So it was more, and then the machine started through the ages, getting more gimmicky and more, and more, uh, this is going to isolate this. This is going to give you a better, butt. this is going to do all that. So if you notice, even to this day, a lot of the quote unquote, regular workout people will gravitate more towards the machines than they do the barbells and the dumbbells when it's proven that the barbells and the dumbbells are actually in most cases better for them. Yeah, I mean, uh, so with, I, with my opinion is machines. It's it's I'm not uh, machines are are good, right? Like, but it it I feel in my in my opinion it should be accessories to your main lifts, right? Yes. So, uh, and, and obviously, it's all depending what your goals are, and obviously, it's depending on what what you have on hand, right? Like, I'm like, if if you have a machine at home, uh, and you you know you don't have to spend. Uh, all this money to go and buy yourself a barbell and uh, 400 pounds of weights and a cage or whatever. If you want to do a machine at home, like, yeah, sure. L at least start with that, right? Let's just get do something first. Right? right. And expanding on that, I think that's another thing that really boomed everything was 
QVC and all that, selling all that equipment for people at home. Like you'd get the thigh master, you'd yeah. get the total body, you'd get um, Bowflex. Yeah. You know, they were really big because people were like, they were starting to get it into working out. Yeah. But it wasn't as. Uh, but I, I, I would contend that the thigh master is a, is different than the Bowflex. <laughs> yeah, I, I believe I wasn't saying one was better than the other. I was just saying as far I, as I, I mean, like a different category, I should say. Right. I should, yeah, because well, it's you like know, as crazy it is, the thigh master is made in a, uh, an actual thing. People still do it to this day, not with a thigh master, but it's um, it's adduction. Sure. So it's sure. it's pulling in, which there's machines, there's thousand dollars machines that are doing what that little stupid thing did in a nutshell. Sure, but like it also. Well, well, that's true, but it also. I don't think it offered a variety of resistance. No, uh, nor nor did it, and it was only one specific uh, exercise. So you I can't mean, walk around like a duck, so you can see your inner thigh all the time when you're walking. <laughs> I got really sweet inner thighs. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, at least with Bowflex, you know, you have a, a variety of exercise and a variety of uh, um, resistance uh, when you train with with Bowflex. I'm not saying it's the best thing. I'm just saying it's. I, I would consider them on, on two different categories uh, for sure. Right, right. Again, I wasn't saying they were in the same category. I'm saying they're in the category of things people did at home. Oh yeah, they yeah, bought yeah, on the television. Yeah. Again, no, there I'm, was no yeah. online, so you called in. You'd watch infomercial which aren't as huge as they used to be, but that was the rage. Infomercials would be on all night and they'd have the, like the home shopping network and QVC and all this other stuff. And my mother was infamous for that. She would buy stuff, bring it home, use it once. And then it would like collect dust. Yeah. So uh, it, it never really, again, look at this movie star on TV. You want to look like them buy this product type thing. So, uh, Again, I think that was just uh, another area where they were starting to do that, and then people were getting tired of that, and then they started more going to the gyms and stuff like that. So, and again, they still sell stuff like that, but I don't think it's as big of a market. I think more people just spend the ten dollars for for a gym and go there, even if they don't go that much. It's only ten dollars a month, and you know, they, they can work out. I agree. Yeah, like so. I, I would rather spend ten, you know, one hundred twelve, one hundred twenty dollars a, a year, ten to ten bucks a month on a gym membership, uh, rather than keep buying these stupid things on whatever gimmicky things on TV or or on the internet. So, right, that's for sure. Uh, but it just, but again, then again, you just have to when you get that gym membership, you have to use it. So. Right. Well, that's the other thing. That's the other thing. And again, I'm not going to knock somebody. You can get a couple bands. I have online clients that I train at home. You need a couple bands, maybe a dumbbell or two uh, between body weight and other stuff. You can get a decent workout at home. You can kick your butt at sure. home sure. with the right programming. Sure. That's the thing. There's there's actually um, uh, there's a lot of pro, a lot of things out there. Uh, so like you could go on Reddit. You could there's just for body weight stuff. Like you could. There's whole whole things, just the um, whole subreddit dedicated to body weight exercises and programming, and um, you know, uh, and just just like that. But that's for just, and, and that's they also have not only that uh, for for that stuff, but I also have for like cardio and like couch to five k. So if you want to, uh, I hate that. What? I just don't like it. I hate the way it sounds. But I'm no, that's. It's actually effective. It's just a matter of the, you know, they, they don't come up with the best names. So <laughs> they're saying like, Hey, if you're starting out and you want to start, you know, slowly getting up there, just, this is, this is a good way. This is a good path to do it. So I'm not a big <laughs> supporter of running for most people. That's why. No, 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 not, not for, I'm saying for most people, I don't, I don't, I just don't think it's an effective way to work out, especially for dudes as they get older. Hmm. Well, I, I bike ride. So, but that's uh, different though, dude. That's different yeah. than running. So it's way I, different. Yeah. Well, I mean, Kristen runs, uh, but like, like, you know, it's, I, I think it's better than nothing. Right. Like, and, and she runs every day and she has a goal and she's like, I, I really admire her for doing like for, for running every day and like, and not making sure that's, that's a priority in life. Like that's the, that's, 
hey, it's better than most people. Actually, that's better than me, right? Like right. at least before I started riding my bike, so and 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 started power powerlifting again, right? So, hey, dude, uh, I'm not gonna knock people. There's a lot of people that get that uh, quote unquote runner's high from running. Like they yeah. really do get something. From oh, yeah, sure. That's a, yeah. You have to run a long. You have to run at least an hour, I think, or 45 minutes for that to something, kick in. About something 45, like something yeah. like that. But you know, there's people that you're never gonna tell them to stop running. You know, and with those people, I have to just, I have to work around that. I have to say, okay, if you're going to do that, then you have to, again, along the lines of programming, then you have to do a little bit of this, 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 and this to make that better and have the longevity to keep doing that if that's what you like to do. Oh, right, right, so, right. And there's not enough people that do that. There's some people that they just run for two hours every single day. Oh, and yeah. And I'm talking as I we get it. older, too. Young people can get away with a lot. Even like 20s, 30s. You can get away with a lot, but you start hitting 45, 55, and you start getting up there. If you want to keep doing it, you got to do things a little bit differently. Yeah. Without a doubt. So, but yeah, uh, let's get back to, um, uh, through the, so, um, I don't know what year it was, but, uh, the people started going more toward, you know, it seems like it almost happened overnight where, CrossFit came in, and you saw more women powerlifting. And uh, 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 they weren't powerlifting. <laughs> no, no, not CrossFitters. Okay, I know okay. women that powerlift. <laughs> okay, I'm just saying, don't, 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 no, don't, don't, I, don't mix those two together. <laughs> no, I would never in a million years do okay. that. Okay. Um, but I'm just saying, more women, because again, the whole, I don't want to get bulky. I don't want to lift. I still hear that. All these years later, even though it's been proven not to be true, all these years later, like yeah. from women, I'm like, you don't understand when you do resistance training as a woman, especially again, I always go back to older people because that's my my target demographic that I work with, um, that this helps with osteoporosis and stuff like that. When you're under heavier weight and resistance training, it helps to keep your bones strong. Yeah, for sure. Sure. And 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 having strength and 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 muscle tone again is something that you need that you lose as you get older naturally. So to do everything you can to fight that is to helping you have that longevity and staying young. So I it just it boggles my mind because I, I as guys who don't do stuff we lift our asses off and we don't automatically like Thanos, I can snap my fingers and I'm bulky. You know, it's not that easy. Right. Right. I and mean, we have testosterone and women yep. don't well, have very little amounts in their body compared to a man. And they, and they think they're just like, Oh, I'm, I'm doing some squats. My legs are going to get big. No, no, no. I mean, you have to really put effort into it if you really want to do that. So, right. And it depends on your training. Again, yep. are you doing for hypertrophy? Or are you doing for power and strength? Right. You can combine the two into a, a workout th for a seven day period. You can combine the two, but when it comes down to it, what is your goal more? Cause that's what you have to lean towards more. And again, as far as programming goes, I mean, I don't know if you want to get into it now, but what is the difference between programming for strength and programming for, um, hypertrophy? Well, w when I power lifted, I had, I did both. I had, I had mesocycles for, uh, a hypertrophy, uh, and then I would ramp my whole macro cycle. The, my 12 week cycle would be, uh, geared for my, uh, max lift at the end of the 12th cycle. Right? right. Because that's, that's usually how it is. But in the beginning I would, I, I would have, you know, two, one, two, uh, well, like a couple uh, meso cycles of, um, uh, of hi just hypertrophy, uh, hypertrophy, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the hypertrophy. So it, it'll be, you know, more volume, less intensity, programming intensity, right? And then at near 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 the end of the uh, the twelve week cycle, I would it would be it would be more focused on uh less more intensity, uh less volume. So right. More rest in between sets. Well, well yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, because that's another thing you gotta keep in mind. Does that again, what's big now? Is hit training and boot camps. Yeah. There's no rest. It's the go nonstop, do as many things as possible in 
45 minutes to an hour. It, it doesn't well, matter how bad your form is. Just get it done. Well, hit, hit training, you still have rest, right? That, that's the whole thing of hit training, isn't it? It's like you 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 burst, you have a burst of... Well, there's two amount. kinds. It depends how you spell it. H-I-I-A-T. And there's H-I-T-T, high intensity. I forget what the one stands for, but the one that you said is a high intensity interval training. Right. And then there's an... Oh, what the heck was it? Why am I having a brain fart right now? But it's H-I-T-T. And they're a little bit different. High intensity I, training. High intensity. No, I thought it was two T's. High intensity. Well, there's Timbata training. Have you heard of Timbata? No, uh, no. What's that? Timbata is where you do 20 seconds of work and then you rest 10 seconds. and you do Oh, it. yeah. So that's a form of hit. Yes. Um, right. right. Um, yes, I've, I've heard of that before. And, then, and obviously the guy's name was Timbata that made it. Yeah. So, uh, but that, yeah, that's another form. And a hit is a broad term for a lot of different things, but yeah, uh, well, yeah, that just, that just basically means that basically means, uh, uh, a burst, a, a segment where you really work like a burst of energy, a burst of exercise. And then with a, with a, and then and it's usually all out, small, all out, all yes, out. all out. And then you would break for a little bit. And then do it again, but you would get a lot in in a short amount of time, right? And that's what they banked on, telling people uh, get the most out of a fifteen minutes or twenty minutes because nobody wants to work out. So they were trying to sell on that to a lot of people that didn't want to work out for forty five to an hour, or didn't have the time to do that because of kids and work and family. And I mean, there's and hit, all that. The hit training for H I I T is is it's it's good, right? Like it's. Like, oh, it's not bad. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, let's actually they uh, a lot of endurance runners because they can't train for a marathon every day. They 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 use hit they incorporate hit to to in their training as well. So they'll have they'll they'll do a long run and then on other days, maybe like every other day, they would do hit training just because um, this will help in their endurance as well in the right. long run. So. Right. And, and, and for most people, though, that just are looking for overall health, you need a mixture of all of it. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. 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 I agree with you. I agree. So with you. you need resistance. You yep. need active recovery. You need rest and you need a little bit of hit. And that's it. So you can divide yep. it all up. And, and that's broad statement. You can do it any way you want in there. But yep. for most people and most people don't. Most people yeah. do too much of one of those and, and wonder why they're not getting where they want to go or they don't feel that great. So they're not doing enough mixture of it through the week. Yep. Obviously, if you're doing it for a sport or your career or whatever, yes, then you have to do it for your goal. But you know, most people for overall health and to look good, you don't you want a mixture if you want to last long too. Because too yep. much hit training, again, a lot of people get hurt. They overdo it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just that's 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 why it's based. Yeah, don't overdo it, right? Like, just go max, but like, don't. I mean, just go as much as your body tells you to. <laughs> don't. You know, go. not enough people. When you got people saying no pain, no gain for so many years, people don't understand the difference of the pains. Yeah, yeah. Burning in a muscle when you're doing a curl, okay, that's a good pain. Yeah, getting sharp pains in your elbows as you're. That, yeah. No, yeah. that's not good. Yeah. So, Anything. That, I mean. A good rule of thumb is anything on a joint that's pain, that's probably not good. So, Right, right. And it could be an easy fix. It's not even an injury. Right. It can be right, an easy right. fix. It could be your yep. form. It yep. could be, uh, I, I hate to say this, ladies and gentlemen, but an, in, an inactive muscle. <laughs> or it could be anything. You know, yeah. it could be a muscle taking over for another muscle. Yeah. Doing something it shouldn't do. Because, uh, again, all muscles have a main job and a secondary job and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of times your body will, will make their secondary job their first job if another muscle ain't doing what they're supposed to do. Yep. So, um, And that's when injuries happen because then you have overuse stuff and blah, blah, blah. So, um, so uh, continuing on with that. So HIIT training started to become big. CrossFit started to become big. Powerlifting and bodybuilding stayed pretty much the course. But they started to back off a little bit, and these other things started to come out into the front. 
Um, and then I think you go all the way till now. And I think the biggest thing now are boot camps. I think that is the biggest thing. And I don't know about by you, but uh, trainers, especially trainers that don't want to open their own place, all they need is some place outside and they can run a boot camp. Yeah. Or I'm, if they. Yeah. Yeah, and they don't, they don't even have to be certified or anything. No, or anything. and yeah, anything. let's not even – that's a whole nother issue I could talk for 30 minutes on yeah. that's really aggravating with this industry is that anybody and their mother, hey, I lost 10 pounds 24 hours later. I'm taking on clients. Yeah. It's like, no, that's not okay. There's somebody who spent years and a lot of money and time researching and going to school and doing all this to have some person who sells a supplement say they're a health coach and actually coach people, it's insulting. It's insulting. I mean, it's like being a doctor. You put a Band-Aid on somebody. Now you're doing operations in your basement. It, it, it's ridiculous. And there's no um, – uh, wow, what's the word I'm looking for? There's no um, – not accountability, but um, like when the government looks over well, something. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I guess there's – I mean, accountability is probably right is the right word for it. I mean, like there's – what are the repercussions, right? There's, they're not really like, they're. I'm sure they have enough clauses in their thing to say, I'm not, you know, I'm not a doctor, but I'm a health coach, and, you know, but any, any, any pain or whatever, just seek your doctor. Don't, you know, don't right. take my word for it. And then they're signing this liability yeah. form, and, and they're, they're good. <laughs> or they're they using it. other people's program, and they're like, well, it's not my program. I just told you about it. Yeah. So, exactly. but for me, somebody like me. If I tell you, for instance, to do a push-up at home and you do it and hurt yourself, I'm still liable. Yep. Because I'm actually legal. And it, 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 it's ridiculous. And really – I mean, they're, they're, they're legal too. They're just doing it in a different way. They're, they're, they're uh, offset – they're redirecting the uh, accountability and the responsibility to a, a different – It's the American way. Let's redirect the problem. It's not my fault. It's their yep. fault. But – uh, and again, all they need to do a boot camp is here, here's what you have to know to, to run a boot camp. Do five planks, do five burpees, do five kettlebell swings, do five jump squats, boot camp. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. They're all the same. They all do the same thing. That's it. You don't yeah. need anything else. You need no equipment and people like they're reinventing the wheel. Okay, I just want—I can tell you right now, most people don't need burpees. Yeah. Okay, most people planks. I would agree that most people need anti-rotational exercises for the core. A number one. People do way too many crunch type movements and stuff, which wind up giving you back pain if you do it. That's why I hate all these uh, thirty-day ab things. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that because you wind up with a hurt back, but yeah, planks um, are good though. Planks are good. Uh, absolutely. Pile off presses. You know what a pile off press is? No. Um, it's, um, where you take, uh, a band mm -hmm. and you put it against you, you, uh, anchor it into something. So like a hook on the wall or sure. anchor it on your door or right. whatever, and you hold it into your chest. Again, I'm doing it on camera, but people on podcast won't see it, but you hold it into your chest with, uh, let's say on my right side, my right arm is facing the wall that it's anchored to. Mm -hmm. I oh, step I out. Okay. Yeah, so I step out so I have resistance trying to pull me and turn me towards yeah. the wall. I hold anti-rotation, deep core muscles engaged, yeah. all that stuff. And I, I just take the band and I go out because at the outmost point of your arm stretched out, that's even more pull. And um, then you just go in and out and that's a pile of press. Right. So you're holding the anti-rotation. Then you obviously do both sides. So I'm big on anti rotation and secondary core work. Like you're working your core when you do squats and deadlifts. Yep. I mean, I'm all about that. But these people but, that yeah. do hour of core stuff, like thousands of crunches and and blah blah blah. And I'm like, dude, yeah. you're hurting. You're not going to get abs. Abs are made in the kitchen. Health is made in the gym. Yeah. So when I used to powerlift, oh, well, I, I'm starting powerlifting again. But like. Uh, when I used to heavily do it, like I, I'll, for for my core, right? It's mostly you know because you have to brace a lot and push against the belt and stuff like that. Uh, but for to to increase that, uh, my ab, my my core muscles and stuff like that, I would you know just planks was fine, and um, I did uh, a weighted 
uh, weighted leg lifts and stuff like that. Just, you know, you just hang, hang over and then just kind of just, um, uh, start to pull your, pull your feet up, you know, you know what I mean? Like in a, like a leg raise. Yeah. Leg raises. A hand and in leg raise. Yeah, exactly. So I thought, I thought those, those were good enough for, at least for me, like I, again, like I didn't have to, I, I felt like I, you know, I had enough core work for my main exercises. I just, those were just accessories for it. And I didn't have, I didn't want to spend two hours just doing core work because I don't, I didn't think I needed to. It's so. a waste. Yeah. Nobody should do two hours of core work. Exactly. Nobody, even bodybuilders, they yep. do core work, but a lot of it's just to look fancy on Instagram and stuff. Yeah. And like, it shows like, off their abs. And like you said, it, it's, it's, you can't spot, you can't spot train. You can't spot reduce fat, right? Yeah. It just, it goes off all off at the same time. So uh, if you want to lose that gut, you gotta just like you said, you gotta eat healthy. You gotta it's in the kitchen. It's not it's it's not in the gym. So right. Everybody's got a six pack, even a six hundred yep. pound guy. Yep. It's just covered. Exactly. Yep, exactly. And people don't realize it. And that's really what exercise has become. Cause I know we want to start wrapping this up. This what exercise has become for most people is just uh a way to burn calories that because they think they're gonna look good. It's lost a lot of its health reasons. Like it's not about being strong. It's not about uh, being healthy. It's not about endurance. It's not about preventing disease. It's not about preventing, you know, osteoporosis or all these other things. It's just a way to burn as many calories as possible. Cause you think you're going to get a six pack and look good. And I, I mean, saying, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not, I, I, th I think, I think that's not a whole lot of, I mean, it would probably back then it was, but like nowadays I, I, I think there's more to it than that. Like, I don't see it being in the industry. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I see, I, I, I belong to those, you know, uh, a, a lot of these fitness uh, subreddits and I just feel like that people nowadays, yes, they want to look good, but they're, they're, they're approaching in a different way. Right. They see these girls on Instagram, right? Like they see these guys on Instagram as well, like doing squats, whatever, doing whatever. So it's, it's not like they're just doing, um, uh, you know, just, uh, uh, uh crunches or whatever. No, not just crunches, yeah. but I'm saying they're working in, 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 doing the exercises number one totally wrong but doing them as quickly as possible and not taking much rest and and their end goal is to burn as many calories as possible that is the premise of most boot camps it's not about yeah. form if, you, if you're talking about boot camps sure like i and that's what I, most people are doing because they're affordable they're cheap as hell because anybody can run one so they go for you can go for do a boot camp for five bucks that's yeah, it. I, I guess I'm not sure what your demographic you're actually looking at when you say most people. soccer moms, soccer oh, okay, moms sorry. and uh, women over the age of 35. OK, see, I'm thinking more of like uh, college 20 year olds, possibly like up to 30. So the total opposite of you. <laughs> well, people, well, people, me is, is uh, like like in our age bracket as well, like that just because of the information now, right? Like, and uh, the, at least the males, right? Um, they, 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 they kind of understand how, how these things work and they know, uh, like I said, when you say boot camps for soccer moms, okay, may I'll give you that. But like, uh, I feel like just because how the information is, is easily accessible now and you could research it on your own. Uh, and then you see other, and you follow other people too, right? Like, Hey, he looks great. What is he doing? Oh, he power lifts, he body builds, whatever. Uh, he doesn't go to a boot camp, right? That's, uh, I don't we know. We run I, in different circles, dude, because yeah. I don't, I don't, again, I'm not a Reddit person, but I do follow a lot of other things. Um, uh, a lot of boards I follow. I follow yeah. a lot of groups on Facebook and, and, uh, having a kid in school and dealing with a lot of moms and going to the school and being in those groups and my wife doing yeah. what she does. Cause she does, um, uh, she sells, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of color street, but it's like nails. Okay. No, like you put them yeah. on yourself where well, she does that stuff. And all these people in all these groups, all these women, again, whether it be from seeing things on Instagram or seeing things on TV or the movie stars or whatever it is, they, have very bad body image issues, super, super bad. 
uh, especially ones that have had kids and stuff. And they're looking for the simplest answer to give them the body they think they're going to get. And most of that is done through the supplement companies, these, these workout videos and boot camps that are cheap and promise stuff because they're in a group and women look for that, that accountability in that group thing with other women. Yeah. So, uh, so when you, yeah. And that for sure, I mean, that means that's definitely a different circle, right? Because they're, you're talking about, uh, people who look at Facebook, people who like, and you're talking about the moms, right? Like you're talking about the, uh, that type of group. Sure. Like regular yeah. family people, like, like uh, mothers that have had kids and their husbands are working all the time and they only have a certain amount of time a day to do stuff. Yeah. Which I still feel that a really good program workout, even at home to get them better results overall than these boot camps. Like I, I had a woman that um, is friends with my wife uh, and she's got a disease. I can't remember what it is, but it causes her joint pain and everything else. And she's going to boot camps five days a week. Mm. You can't do that. But again, she thinks, well, if I go five days a week, oh, look, I still don't have, you got to understand, dude, uh, dealing with a lot of women and training women, no matter how good they look, no matter how strong they are, no matter how they kick their kicked butt in a workout that I threw at them, they will concentrate on a little bit of skin hanging over their bra strap than anything else. Mm, yeah. And I've seen that more times than I can count. No matter what they do, how good they do it, how they nail the workout, how they nail their nutrition, how they nail um, getting a good night's sleep, how they've been working on de-stressing, they will find that one piece of skin hanging over and that will derail the whole thing where they'll start to reconsider their goals. They'll start to reconsider what yeah. I'm having them do. It's, I mean, it's okay to, to, to be critical uh, to a point of yourself, right? Like, or at least there's something you're doing, but it should, um, it shouldn't derail the whole, the whole thing, right? It should be at least in a, in a way that it will be objective. And so for instance, if uh, <clears throat> if I'm powerlifting and uh, and I'm done with a set or I, I'm and I'm done with my whole twelve week cycle and I, let's say I didn't hit the things I didn't want to hit, I'll be critical like, hey, that's maybe I'm only a pound, let's say five pounds, five pounds off, right? Like, <clears throat> I'll be critical of that. But even though I, you know, I I probably did great and I probably did was stronger than than I was the last uh, from the former uh, pre previous cycle. I'll be critical about it, but at least I'll use that to say, what did I do wrong in my program? And let me adjust, right? right. Uh, I'm not going to totally, you know, stay, oh, this is crap. I'm not going to do this anymore, but I'm just going to adjust a little bit. Uh, so critical is fine, but I, and, I'll, and I guess that's also- But it's context out. too, dude. Uh, you got a woman who had six kids. Guess what? She might have some sagging skin that sure, maybe an, sure. an operation can take over. So that's not good. That's not good for her to concentrate on that. Be, mm. to de derail her whole workout if that's something that's not going to change that's sure. like saying i have i'm missing an arm i'm pissed so i'm going to throw my everything out the window because i'm missing an arm there's nothing you can do about it you can get a fake arm but you're never going to have a real arm again so true, it's something true. you just have to deal with so but in but, your but context i agree maybe you can re change something in your programming maybe you didn't yeah. sleep that good that week right maybe you had some extra stress in your life Maybe you didn't hit your macro count or whatever. Yeah. yeah it, it, all that could be fixed. But I'm saying a lot of times these women are, are basing it on stuff that maybe isn't fixable. And that's derailing. Okay. Everything. So and that's yeah. then pushed by Ex Instagram extra, and stuff yeah. like that. Ex extra sin is different than like a little fat over over the bra strap. But yeah, I mean, that's true. I, I agree with you. Like if it can't be fixed, you know, then then you just have to uh, either live with it or fix it. Like, hey, you know, just go. If you don't want it, hey, someone's got to tell them that you got to go get surgery to get that fixed, right? But if you get, if you wrap it, like, let's wrap it, then it'll go away. You didn't hear? <laughs> you know about that thing? No. I mean, I you, guess, it, I guess. Uh, they take this wrap. It's like a fifty dollar wrap, and you mm -hmm. put this cream on it. You put it around your stomach or whatever area, and it shrinks it. Oh, okay. I mean, like, I think that's a pretty old idea to tell you the truth. So. Oh, no, it's brand new, dude. And <laughs> no. it's a special mixture. You have to buy it from us. You can't just take saran wrap and put yeah. it around it. You have to use our special wrap. But yeah. again, we run in different circles. So I, I train, like I said, a lot of 
older people and 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 these people are are treating themselves like they're a 25 year old bodybuilder and they're not that's what i that's that's where the issue comes in you you're in a different circle than me and i i'm not disagreeing with what you're saying but what i see most quote unquote regular people that their goal isn't to hit max lifts and their goals aren't to uh have a a bodybuilder per se physique um they are hurting themselves more than they're doing themselves good and and i and i try every day to to help people just you know because at a certain age if you're not doing it for your career or special thing or whatever you should just be going for overall health with you know some fringe things maybe you want to have a bigger biceps or if you're a dude yeah maybe you want to have a little bit yeah. bigger of a butt but overall health and longevity should be the main focus of everything oh i agree i agree like even and they even, don't yeah but i and and i agree 100 percent uh but also it's it's while well, that should be the main focus but like and there should be it should make it should ask yourself why why do you want to do this and what makes it fun for you right because that what brings you um coming back in right like for for me it was seeing seeing progression seeing changes seeing whatever um some people might like be into it because um <laughs> are you getting a full rundown of uh Polish shore and everything yeah yeah <laughs> anyway so all well, the people on the podcast will understand what that's going on with that that's so. uh that's uh we're hearing from an old friend from outer space omv dash yeah. 6.5 <laughs> <laughs> anyway he'll be on another show uh but what was i saying so but it should you should also ask yourself like what um what makes this fun and 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 just keep and then just do that right like if it's if it's rock climbing it's whatever just just do it and um do more but, of what you love enough of what you yeah. need yeah and 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 to to your point i like so i think when you say regular people it's kind of hard right like we can't see keep saying regular people because because there, there's regular people in in that general population bracket. i mean i don't know general population even that it's like who do we con consider general population? Right, well, I we think... don't have to get into statistics here. I'm just trying to put it out basically. <laughs> I, I just most saying. people that aren't in a sport of, of bodybuilding or powerlifting or a, a regular sport, that's well, what I consider a regular person. <laughs> there, there's people, there's regular, pe quote unquote, regular people, got people who go nine to five during the day. Uh, and, and they just, they do a powerlifting routine, a bodybuilding routine. Hey, I, I, heck, I did it before. Right. Yeah, but was, they're not uh, doing it professionally is what I'm that's saying. That's right. Right. That's what I mean. Sure. Sure. That's what I'm saying. And those people are regular people, right. And they're doing bodybuilding and whatever. And that's what I'm saying. When we, when we talk about regular people, it's like the population, you have your idea of regular people, which was be the the people who you're looking at people who go uh, boot camps and perhaps they're the soccer moms or whatever. But when I'm looking at it, the reg my regular people are um, the people I, I I converse with on Reddit or 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 look at or uh, by their posts and stuff like that, which is basically you know twenty to uh, basically twenty to forties, right? Like that obviously it tapers off. They're still like. P, I, there's still 40 plus people who still power lift, right? And still body build. So, uh, but there's less of them. Sure. Like just, but, oh, well, I mean, less than the 20 year old. Sure. <laughs> I agree with you there. Well, less than most 40 plus people is what I'm saying. I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of people who, who yeah, there's a lot of people that think they're bodybuilders, dude, there's but then them. I'm not saying that what their men the mental state is or what they think about themselves, but they, they do a powerlifting routine. Right. They do. Look, a we can get into routine. the little tiny <laughs> innuendos of every little thing, but for a, a power a podcast that I was trying to keep under an hour, which it's not, <laughs> I would say in general population, which most people would understand. Sure. We can pick apart people. <laughs> <people's> <laughs> but, but, and everything I don't want, I don't want, well, th that's a thing, right? Like when you, when you say general population, I don't want, I, I don't if I say the general population, uh, you know, in the general population, like this happens. Okay, right? what word would you like to use, dude? 
so we can make you happy and we can get on with this. <laughs> what I, word would you like to use for I, regular for people? Well, that's the. Th I I think I think well that I I think that's where uh, we kind of there's a bit of a breakdown, right? Is, is there any regular pe people, right? Like because at least in our in what we're talking about, right? Like we have all walks of life. That's maybe that's my point. We have all walks of life, and what's what's good for one group or one demographic may not be the same goal as uh, another different group. So we can't. I don't think we should say okay, most people or gen or general population because we we don't know exactly. Yeah, we don't know statistical numbers. Okay, yeah. I, I'll agree with you on that. We and don't then, right, and then like exactly. So it, it's again like okay, in my niche as a as a, a personal trainer, that my demographic that I deal with, okay, most of them okay fit what I said was the quote unquote regular person. Okay? okay, not that that's regular people. I'm saying the demographic I deal with, most women are not doing it to be a power lifter or a bodybuilder or anything like that. They're doing it to fit this mold of what they think they should look like. Right. And that's it. So that demographic, which is a lot of people I deal with and see as far as in the circles I run and in the groups I'm a part of with other personal trainers and all that stuff. That's my thing. And I didn't understand what you're what you run in. Am I saying there's not a 55 year old bodybuilder out there? No, of course there is. There's plenty of them. I'm just saying from what I see, and again, I'm going by my niche. Every trainer, if you don't have a niche as a trainer, you're gonna get lost in the noise. And and that's everything. And that's the key term there, niche, right? Right. So I'm only going by, I can only go by my experience and the experience I see of people that I follow. Okay. So that's what I'm basing this on right. and being in the, in the, in the industry for as long as I have and seeing right. most and people. I, and I, I think I bring it up just because it's, that's the whole point, right? It's, I don't want, when, when we start labeling someone as regular, we start comparing ourselves to that person. Like no matter what, what, happens in our life what what's how old we are whatever we're just saying hey if that's regular I, i'm irregular i must be like yeah that. you definitely are <laughs> <laughs> so fitness should be about your personal achievements not compared to like unless you're actually competing right like uh, as a sport but like in general like when you're doing for fitness and health it should be just your personal are you better than yesterday? That's you should, the only thing that you should ask. Or at least about. maintaining yesterday. Yeah, yeah. For some. That's right. enough. Especially when you get older, right? Right. Agreed. So. Right, exactly. It, it really what it comes down to this. There are some awful programs out there that I and again, we don't want to mention its name, but we both could agree on some awful programs out there. Sure, sure. But um the main thing is have overall health be number one and then go from there. Yeah. Okay. That's the main thing. If you're in pain, if you're tired all the time, if you're not sleeping well, if you're having other issues, mental issues, depression that you didn't have before, uh, maybe it's because you're breaking down your body and not giving it enough time to recuperate from it. And so that's where the overall health comes in. So if you're going to program anything, we all have those things we love. Definitely do the things you love, but make sure you're doing plenty of the things your body needs mixed with that. Yeah. And you will have the longevity to keep doing the thing you love for many, many years to come. Nobody should be in chronic pain all the time. You definitely could. I'm not saying that you always alleviate it, but if you're, you're having joint issues that you didn't have before, um, and you don't think there's a way to fix it. I disagree with that. I, I, yeah. I really believe through proper movement, proper um, um, corrective type exercises, sometimes activation, things like that. You can work through it and still continue to do all those things you love and be in a lot less pain, if not eliminate it. So when yeah. you're programming, and this is my last word on it, you can finish up, Rob. Yeah. My last thing is if you're going to pick a program, do a little research. Get 
maybe talk to a professional, even if you don't want to work with a trainer long term. Maybe talk to a trainer just to get your program in line that you can't do by yourself. Get the knowledge from somebody who's been through it. Do your research on the trainer. Make sure they're they're competent in what you want to do, and not you know somebody who's a trains bodybuilders and you're a 65 year old woman looking to get uh, take care of her knee pain and you have osteoporosis. Maybe don't talk to that trainer. So do your research. Find a good trainer. Learn how to do things right. And do it consistently, and you should be fine, Rob. Yeah. So, and and to add to that, like, yeah, do your research, but also like, not only your trainer, but your trainer's clients. So, like, to how, try to try to talk to them if you can, right? If, if they're if you know them, if you're, um, yeah, just uh, don't trust testimonials. Maybe look into them a little bit more. Look at the broader then just don't go by one testimony no, 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 but but just no i'm not saying yeah i'm not saying that i'm just saying actually personally trying to contact them right so say hey what did they like about them what they didn't like um and, and treat it like an amazon review right like all the ones that are, any opinions that are highly regarded or horribly re regarded should be taken with a grain of salt like the ones in the middle or anything in common uh you know hey if this this trainer was you know like has a a lot of clients that let's say had a the same problem with them right and then perhaps that it's that's true about that that trainer so yeah do your research but all, not only on the on the trainer themselves but just on try to try to talk to their clients and uh in addition so and like uh, as in terms of getting older and and uh and still staying active and whatever it's it all happens when you're younger but if you're 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 doing it later in your life and trying to get back in the swing of things just start off slow and and just get, know your limitations dude yeah know your limitations just, just but just do something per day and then just try to increase that a little bit and but don't hurt yourself right uh, just go out for a walk right and if if you don't believe that older people could like be active you live in south florida you'll see a lot of older people just probably better shape than than yeah, a lot come of talk to my people. client honey from germany she's 75 years old it kicked the butt of most people half her age so yeah so ex exactly so like you don't you don't have to just don't because you're you're getting older just doesn't mean that you should just give up or not even start there's always there's always there's always room to start uh, especially you just have to yourself. program a little bit better when you get older you can't just go do whatever like when you're young well, true. I, I'm not saying you go do whatever, but you got to start somewhere, right? Yes. Just, like, yeah. don't, don't, don't say one day. And by the way, I thought this is my closing word, not yours, but, um, <laughs> okay. I'm going to mute my mic. <laughs> yeah. I, I was nice and quiet for yours. So, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so <laughs> what was I saying? Um, but you got, you just got to start somewhere. Just agreed. Like, don't, don't, if you're, if you're starting today, don't, don't say, oh, I'm gonna go lift 100 pounds right now. Just, just, just go out there, walk, and then walk, getting your mail. Walk to the store, then maybe run, like, like, may jog or do, or walk faster, right? I would say may jog, not jog when you're older, but like, just like walk faster. Yeah, great on the joints. I got a bad knee. I'm gonna go jogging. I, I didn't say they had a bad knee. A lot of people, all the older people, still have great knees. <laughs> yes, yes. They have beautiful knees, dude. Bad finish your thought. Uh, yeah, I thought you were gonna stay quiet. <laughs> you just you always have to just chip in, don't you? That's what co-hosts do, but I'm gonna shut up. Well, I, well, I, I was nice and quiet when you said I this is my last word, then you could go jump in. So anyway, uh but anyway, my last point was just to just be again. I don't want to reiterate, but I just want to make sure that people understand since I was so so much uh, interrupted here. Um, that just just go out there, start slow. Uh, just because you're old doesn't mean you're dead. So just start somewhere. Um, and to the other people who are not old, uh, we're getting up there. Same thing, basically. But uh, just remember the things that you do now are. The baseline of what you're going to be later. So, uh, if you're going to 
get into habits, right? Everything's about habit. So if you're into a habit now that you're eating healthy, you're, you're, uh, you're taking care of your body, it's just going to be easier when you get older. So, and I will end it off on that. And I, I agree with you 100% on the habit thing. Not enough people um, concentrate on the, um, the habits that it's going to take to get to their goal. They just think of the outcome goal not the behavior goals that they need to do right. to get there. The outcome goal is the last thing you should worry about. It's yeah. the behaviors and the habits. It's anything that you there. Yeah. It's anything that brings you in the next day and, and, and do it again. So, and like, like I had a conversation with someone else. It just, Hey, just if, if you're having trouble, just getting, getting in the habit, just tell yourself, I'm just going to do it for five minutes and then take it from there because it'll give you, it'll give you say when you go in there for five minutes, like, Hey, I feel great. I'm going to do this for a little longer, or you won't even feel it. You'll be in there for 10 minutes and you won't feel it. And, and not, maybe you, not even go in, just take five minutes for yourself. That's hard enough for a lot of people. Sure. Just sure. take five minutes for sure. themselves to do whatever meditate even. Yep. Who cares that, that as long as you just start somewhere and that's it's lots, it's a lot of people, it's easier just to start off on five minutes. But anyway, that's the show. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I think I, I think we covered a lot. That's good. Yeah. Um, we uh, hope you like the fitness episodes. We like to do them once a week. Um, we're going to, again, we'll have different subjects every week. We try to keep them under an hour. This one a little bit longer, but program is kind of a broad. Uh, routines and program are kind of a broad thing. So um, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we enjoyed it. It helps us not be so much of a nut jobs like we are on the other episode. But uh, stay tuned. Uh, yeah, Sunday, Monday will be our regular episode. And then we'll be here next week again for the uh, fitness episode. So we thanks for listening. Thanks, guys. Uh, we'll see, okay, see Bob, <laughs> thanks, guys. Uh, see you later. Stay healthy. Stay active. Take it easy, guys. Health through movement, baby. Get out there and do something. Have a good one. <laughs>